Hi, thank you for watching this video. What we're going to look at today is how to read a file in Python without new lines. So a new line is what we use to mark the end of a line and the beginning of a new one. And it is slightly different in different programming languages and text editors, but in Python we use a special character which is a backslash n. So for Python that is the representation of a new line. We're going to see that again in a, in a few moments, but to start with, what we're going to do is we're just going to use Notepad. I'm, I'm in Notepad here, so I'm sure you can see, to just create a very simple text file. After each line of text, I'm going to press my Enter key, which is what Notepad uses to, um, to implement a new line. So I'm not having any space, I'm just printing, pressing Enter after each line of text. And I'm going to do one there too. So that's my file and I'm just going to save that and I'm saving it in the documents directory and I'm going to call it a uh, new line. There you go. So I've got my file to work with. Let's have a look at how we can open and read the file in Python to start with. I have um, my Jupyter notebook open already. I've opened this because everything's taking a really long time at the moment on my computer. I'm not sure if it's because it's Friday afternoon or not. But um, yeah, not to slow things down. So the most basic way of opening a file with Python is to do the file open statement and because I'm already in the correct directory I can just pass through the name of the file and the second parameter is how I want to open it so in this instance I just want to read the file so if I use this R parameter that's just opening it as a read only file which we can now do okay so this is basically our text and this is how Python reads it. So it's got the hello my name is text correct and as you can see here hopefully after each um, of my lines of text that we have that character we looked at before the backslash n character. So that in Python that's the representation of a new line. A much cleaner way of opening files in Python is this with open statement um, just because it will close the file for us afterwards as well. So it's good good practice I think to use the with open. Um, and the other thing we can do is we can actually give it a variable name and we can print it then uh, and this makes it a bit cleaner as well but easier to look at. So that's my um, with open statement and we're printing it out exactly the same file and what we get here is a, it's a bit of a cleaner representation. It does look slightly different this output to what we had before but as I say bear in mind this backslash n that we've seen here is basically just that new line character so rather than reading it here Python has actually implemented it so this looks very similar to our um, original uh, text file. Okay so we've looked at actually opening and reading the file but the key thing we want to get through now is, is how we can do that without these new line um, breaks appearing and there are four distinct methods we can do to, to use to do that and the first one we're going to look at is a method called splitting as the name suggests, uh, splitting is effectively going to split our string into a list and then each split is going to be represented by a different um, list item. So if I'm just going to copy this uh, code across over here and after my um, file read method what I can do is I can do uh, a split line. So we're going to start with a split lines and this is one way of doing it and what this does is by default it will split my um, my text file on the new line break so every time there's a new line break it's going to split it and it's going to represent that as a different uh, list item so if I do that there you can see the output is each line of text as a separate list item now this is the split lines method and by default it uses the um, uh, the, the, the line separator to split. There's another method we can look at um, which is just the split method which is the same uh, in the same kind of category as split lines the only difference is we can actually specify the separator. So I'm just going to copy that one across here so this one is, is split and the difference here is I can actually specify what I want the separator to be. It could be anything, it could be any character, I could put it um, with anything, but in, in our example, we again, we want to do it on the new line. So that's the backslash n character. And if I do that, you can see I, I, I get the same output. The only difference is 
I guess over here, because I'm actually specifying the new line separator, it's actually printed another list item where um, on our original file, let me see if I can pull it up. Yeah, so where on our original file, we actually put a new line break over here. So um, that, that's the only reason we have this difference here between those two methods. But they're, they're very similar in terms of output, as you can see. And uh, the, the issue is here, I've got each of my, um, my, my, my lines of script over here returned as individual list items. Um, could be useful if, if my original file was maybe uh, a list of numbers, or if I wanted to keep all of these separate, it could be useful to have them as list items. But as I hope you can see in our particular example, yes, it has um, removed the new line, but it hasn't really given us the output we want to. So let's look at some other methods of doing this. Okay, so the second method we're going to look at is a method called stripping. Um, and what this does, it basically removes uh, spaces at the at the beginning, we can see at the beginning and at the end of, of our string, and that can just not only be white spaces, but also can include new line characters as well. Now this is really best illustrated by actually doing it, but the first thing I'm gonna do is actually change slightly our file to make it more obvious what we're doing. So what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna add some spaces before and after my words. The line, the returns are gonna still be in there, but I'm just adding spaces randomly over here, as I hope you can see. Let's do that. So it's a bit more spaced out. There's spaces before and after most of the lines of text there. And I'm going to save that as, um, let's call it new line space. And again, it's a text file. Now if I come back to my Jupyter notebooks, I'm just going to um, clear through my, or clear the kernel over here just so we have a bit more space so we can show this method properly okay and I'm just going to delete uh, all of these files so let me delete apologies to be one second just to create a bit of space over here okay so now we're ready to go the first method we're going to look at is, is just the basic strip method so let's have a look at that one so maybe what we can do is just um, read our new file, oops, sorry, just uh, regularly, as we did before. And what we can see here is that we have these uh, spaces. So spaces before our text are called the leading spaces, and the spaces after the text are called the trailing spaces. So what our strip method can actually do is it can get rid of the, uh, the white spaces and also uh, the new line characters in our text. The thing to bear in mind though is that the, the way this works, the function of the method strip method works, it will iterate over our line, uh, over our file line by line. So we have to, if, sorry, we will have to iterate it over, over our file line by line. So um, this is the function. I'm just gonna hopefully copy it in here. I'm not gonna write it again for you, but um, basically, yeah. So we're iterating over our file line by line and asking it to strip out the white spaces and the new line characters. This is this strip function here, and we're doing it line for line in file. So for each line, we want to strip out the um, the white spaces and we want to strip out the new line breaks. And if we run that function, hopefully, what we'll see here is we'll see yeah, also all of the white spaces and the new line breaks have been stripped out, and we just get one long um, line of text. No, so 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 that's great, but. Um, what happens if we actually want to keep our uh, our white spaces? Obviously, in this example, we might want to keep all of them. But supposing we just want to strip out our um, our new line characters and keep the white spaces, well, we can do that by uh, similar to what we did before with the splitting. If we pass our new line character into the uh, strip parameter, so oops, sorry, let me just copy this function off again. And rather than asking it to strip everything out, like we have done over here, what I can do is I can actually specify, I just want to strip out new lines. So there I'm specifying, just stripping out the new lines. And if I run that, I get, oh, let me just see if you can make sure you can see that. Hello, my name is Rakesh. And um, those white spaces that we have in the original file have remained, but the, um, the new line breaks 
have been stripped out. So a slight variation on this strip function we have here is the um, rstrip function. So what this does is rather than stripping uh, both the, the leading and the, the trailing spaces, it just strips out the trailing spaces. So the, the R would be the, the right hand side of our, um, of, our, of, our, of our text. So it would only strip out any trailing spaces or new line breaks. But other than that, it works pretty much the same. So let me just, um, so make sure we can see that. I hope you can see that properly. So rather than strip, if we put in here, R strip. And I'm just going to remove this because um, we want it to strip out. It's easier to show if we strip out the white spaces as well. And if we run that, so what you can see here is it's kept, for example, on hello, it's kept the leading white space. But what it's done is it's trimmed all the, um, uh, sorry, the trailing white spaces and the new line breaks. So that's a slight variation on the strip function. It just gives you more focus. But we have to bear in mind, though, that we, we have to assume that all of our new line breaks are to the right of our, our lines. And again, we, we do have to iterate over it because it does work on a line by line basis. OK, so the third method we're going to look at is slicing. Um, but before we do that, I think it'd be a good idea if I can just uh, once again clear everything up and just tidy it up so we have a bit more space over here. Now I'm, I'm, we're going to we're going to run through this uh, the slicing method, but uh, just just bear bear in mind it's not a uh, it's not really the preferred method. You have to be very cautious when you use it because it isn't as targeted as the other methods we've we've looked at. Okay, so let's get back to the beginning. So with slicing, what we're effectively going to be doing is we're going to be asking Python to remove the last character of each string, and we can do that with negative slicing. So if I just, uh, let's just bring up our original new line file. So what we'll be saying to Python is to remove the last character of each string. If you look at this, um, it would seem like we're asking it to move the is, for example, on the characters. But bear in mind, if I open the file again, just as a read only, with Python, the last character is hopefully going to be this, um, this special new line character. So because uh, it works line by line, we're going to have to iterate over our file again. Um, and what we can do over here is we're not going to strip, but we're actually going to slice. So I'm going to do negative slicing because it's the last character. So what we're doing here is saying to Python to, um, to remove the very last character of each line. And if I run that, oops, sorry, that's new line space, that's my fault. Apologies. So if I run that on the, the text file, the, the basic text file, we can see that, that that's worked. So I haven't lost any characters and it's taken out that new line character, the new line break character, and we've sliced, we've chopped that off. But again, you need to bear in mind, this is a really indiscriminate way of doing it. It won't care what that last character is and there's no way for us to specify it. So, so it's worked in this instance because the file that we started with is is has you know is pretty well formatted in a way in that the last character of all our lines is a new line break so what would happen if we change that so let me just go back and we're going to i'm going to take out um some characters of my name keep everything the same so you notice here, I, I haven't pressed enter after the e um because i, I want to see what happens when there's when the last character of this line isn't isn't the new line it isn't the enter character so let me save that and i can save that as a let's call that new line slice okay and now let's run exactly the same bit of code on our on our new line slice file so let me just copy that It's a W there, and uh, the file is now new line underscore slice. So if I run this, what will happen? Okay, so 
It's worked for the first few lines of our text, but as you can see, our very last line, let me just bring this up as well so maybe it's easier to see it this way. Yeah. Let's put those side by side. So yeah, hello, my name is. This is where we have the problem. Because this very last line, I haven't pressed the enter key, and I've actually got a bit of text there uh, as the very last character. What our slicing has done, it's just taken away this E over here. Um, because we've asked it to remove the last character and we haven't specified where the last character is. So it can work in certain circumstances, but if we're not if if, if our basic if our file, the base file, this new line file isn't formatted correctly, then what will end up happening is we'll end up losing data or losing information that can be important. So it's an option, but as I say, please proceed with caution with that one. Okay, so the final method we're going to look at today is a method called replace, which, as the name suggests, means we can uh, we can replace a specific phrase in our string with another specific phrase. Now, um, if once again, let's have a look at our uh, original file. What what we're saying basically is a uh, well, let's say I don't want to save it. I want to open it. If I just open my original new line file. Uh, what we're saying is we can we can replace one bit of uh, our script uh, text with another. So in this instance here, we can uh, expect our um, our new line break to be at the end of our string of text. So what we could do is we could say every time there's a new line, we can replace it with something. And because in this particular instance, we know it's the end of our string of text, we can replace it, for example, with a with a blank space. So let's have a look at how we actually would do that. So if I go back to my file here, what I'm going to do is once again just clean everything out. So uh, I'll quickly do that. Put you on pause. Okay, so that's much better, thank you. So let me just start by once again just printing out our basic um, or reading our, our basic file there. Uh, so what we can do, let me just copy the other previous um, code over. So what we can do is say, well, every time there's an N over here, we want to replace it with something. And the most obvious thing for us to do in this instance is replace it with a with a space. So um, I can do line replace, and I just have to pass in two parameters here. So I need to say what I want replacing. So I want the N replacing with a space. So I've just put a space in there. So let's see how that works. And as you can see, okay, so that's worked really well because now my, my output is really nicely formatted. I've got my little space in between um, each of the lines of text. It's all on one line. I've got rid of the new line breaks. That looks great. But the thing again to bear in mind, this, this works because our original file is formatted that way. So it's an obvious thing for me to look at this original file and say, well, look, every time there's an N over here, I actually want to replace this with a... Um, with this with the space and that works because of the way the new file has been set up the good thing about replace is that we can actually it doesn't have to be a space i could replace that with uh with anything i could do um if i did no spaces it would come out the same i could do double spaces or lots of spaces and it would do that so it has a bit of flexibility but it really depends on what our initial file structure is as to as to how effective it is so we've seen four different methods of um getting rid of our new line breaks and each one of them works in that it does what we want it to do but the thing is it, which one is the best way really as I say it will depend on what the original file is both in terms of content so is it plain text does it have numbers in which case um, you might want to do the split method and keep them separately and then also how is it formatted does it have white spaces are the uh, new line breaks consistent in which case maybe the um, uh, the strip method or the replace method is better. So there are a few different methods for you. I, I hope you've enjoyed it. And uh, the key thing again is just just look at your original file, see how it's formatted, and then you can uh, you can work out what the best way is of getting rid of your new line breaks. Thank you.